So he has categorically explained this thing there. He said, Man istahalla qatla nafsin harram allahu qatlaha bi ghayri haqqin fa ka'anna mastahalla qatla nasa jamiya li annahu yakfur bi istihlalihi qatla nafsin muharram in qatluha. So this was the basic theme which I explained through various evidences in my fatwa. The second important thing is that killing of a non-Muslim, this right has never been given to any person, even in a revenge. So if somebody kills somebody's father, so he has not a legal right according to Islam to take up the arms and kill the murderer's father. So this is against the Islamic discipline, against the law all over the world, and same is the position of Islam and Islamic law. He has to go to the court of law, regular procedure. So Holy Prophet declared, "Man qatala mu'ahadan fi ghayri kunhihi haram Allahu alayhi al-janna." I will explain who is mu'ahad when I will come to Darul Islam and Darul Halb and Darul Ahad. But the basic thing: any person who unjustly kills a non-Muslim. whose life is equally guaranteed as the life of a muslim with whom there was a treaty of peace he was not lawfully allowed to kill him so the prophet said he will make paradise allah will make paradise haram forbidden for him for whole life so this hadith is narrated in sahih bukhari and in nasai and muslim kitab al qasama and many other books and at another occasion abdullah bin umar relates from holy prophet man qatala muahadan lam yarih rahiat al jannah anyone who kills a non muslim citizen he will never smell the fragrance of jannah smell the fragrance of paradise again this hadith is narrated by imam bukhari in as sahih under the chapter of it is the chapter sin of someone who kills a non muslim citizen and again in muslim same chapter and ibn majah and many other books so there are dozens rather twenties of ahadith on this particular subject which i have mentioned in my one of my books on human rights there are chapters and i have written other books on the rights of the non muslim citizens and there i have mentioned in detail and i have quoted some of those hadith in my edict my fatwa too so when it is stated that he will never smell the paradise the fragrance of paradise it means eternity and eternity is always mentioned in islam this in my this book i have mentioned all my references in hadith this just for the disbelievers not for the persons who are just committing forbidden acts so there are quranic verses there are texts of prophetic traditions unanimously agreed upon in bukhari muslim and uh, many books of hadith there are categorical chapters in the books of hadith which declare clearly explicitly or implicitly different the both categories where these kind of killers or the act or terrorist criminal they become out of the ambit of islam and the punishment for them is the same as he has killed any muslim again narrated by abdul rahman he says holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said and imam shafi has quoted this in al musnad and imam abu nuaim in musnad abu hanifa and shaybani in mabsut and behaki in sunan kubra and many other books of hadith in fiqh that one person is a man from the muslims who killed a man from the people of the book he killed some jew in medina the case was presented to the prophet and he said i am most responsible for all of all for fulfilling the rights of those under his care so all non muslim citizens are under my care and guarantee i am the most responsible for their life wealth and property and honor then he ordered the capital punishment for the muslim who had killed a non muslim this was a practice if any muslim killed a non muslim in holy prophet's time and in the time of abu bakr umar usman and ali all the guided four caliphs this was a unanimous law of islam enforced in the caliphate the capital punishment was awarded to the muslim killer if he killed a non muslim 
So always this was declared equal for everyone. And in the end, in this particular point, at the end, I will like to quote a very famous statement of Holy Prophet وسلم, which he issued in his last sermon of Hajjah, Hijjatul Vida. It is also quoted in Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. He said, Inna dima'akum wa amwalakum wa a'radakum alaykum haramun ka hurmat yawmikum haza ka hurmat shahrikum haza ka hurmat baladikum haza ila yawmitul quna rabba. He said, O oh people, he didn't address the Muslims. He said, O oh people, like the Quran addresses, Ya ayyuhannas, O oh mankind, O oh people, indeed your blood your property, your honor, everything is inviolable. Like the inviolability of this day of Hajj, like the inviolability of this month of Ra'a for Hijjah, like the inviolability of this holy city of Makkah. So nobody can take a life of any person, whether Muslim or non-Muslim. Nobody can infringe the right of their honor, property and things. So that's why Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to enter into the treaties with Christians and Jewish tribes and non-Muslim tribes and he always used to give the guarantee of these things. There are many uh, texts of, uh, of treaties which was done by Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and continued and ratified by the uh, Orthodox Caliphs, the guided Caliphs. But I will just quote a few words from one the treaty which he did with the people of Najran, the Christian tribes of Najran. He, he said, I'm quoting the translation, Arabic is there, the text in my book. So it has been cited by Imam Abu Yusuf in Kitab al-Kharaj. Again, Abu Ubaid Qasim bin Salam in Kitab al-Amwal. Then Saad, Ibn Saad in Tabaqat, and Ibn Zanjwa in Kitab al-Amwal, and Balazri in Futuh al-Baldan. Holy Prophet said, indeed, Najran, and this was a city of the Christians, and her allies, all their allies, are under the protection of God and guarantee of the messenger of God. They are to be protected, whether present or absent. They are to be protected in their wealth, lives, lands, religion. This includes those who are present and those who are absent, and their families, their goods, and everything in their possession be it plentiful or scarce. So these were basic teachings of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Can you put this? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And teachings of Quran. Now, another important thing, why this act of terrorism has no place, absolutely no place in Islam. And there is no exception for them. Whatever. I will come to explain this aspect when I utter a few words on the concept of jihad. They are considering it jihad is absolutely an act of ignorance, illiteracy. They don't know what jihad is and what is not. Jihad is never an act of criminality, a brutality. Jihad is never an act of violence. Even during Qital, the lawful warfare, when a just and lawful warfare is going on, during warfare and in the battlefield there were certain prohibitions which were given by Islam and Holy Prophet of Islam and <clears throat> they were for example the killing of women during lawful warfare were declared to be forbidden Holy Prophet وسلم, declared he said Naha Rasulullah an qatlin nisa sibiyan he said that the Killing of women and children have been forbidden forever. No exception to that. It is quoted in Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, Muttafaqala and many other books of Hadith. Again, moreover, Holy Prophet ﷺ declared <coughs> unlawfulness of killing elderly non-Muslim people. Now I am talking during the warfare, when the battle is going on practically in a battlefield, you are not allowed when a Muslim country or any other country who is aboard of war, a proper warfare is going on and military operations are going on. So the old citizens are not allowed to kill. They are forbidden. Holy Prophet said, La taqtulu shaykhan faniyan. 
wala tiflan children are not allowed wala saghiran wala imratan neither the women nor the children this is a complete absolute prohibition for for that lawful war and there are <coughs> all these hadith are available in sahih bukhari muslim abu daud nasai and sunan ibn majja sunan al qubra every book of hadith quotes these chapters furthermore holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam stated that again killing of the religious leaders of non muslim their priest is also forbidden holy prophet declared la taqduru wa la taghullu wa la tumathilu wa la taqtulu bildana wa la ashab as-sawami it is again related in imam ah, musnad ahmad bin hanbal and many other books of hadith holy prophet said that break no promise steal not from the spoils of war and do not mutilate the bodies of your enemies or not slay children and not their monks and priests so their killing is also prohibited in the same way the killing of diplomats was also prohibited even during warfare i'm not i'm just summarizing the thing giving reference instead of giving references for everything my this book contains all references holy prophet declared the killing of diplomats and envoys and ambassadors he said this is forbidden killing of farmers is forbidden during warfare killing of uh, 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 merchants and uh, business community because they provide this they they protect the economy of a country the livelihood of the country they provide the economic prosperity of the to that society so the merchants and the business people they are not allowed to be killed holy prophet said ittaqullah fil fallahin wa la taqtuluhum fear god regarding the farmers and growers agriculturist and do not kill them and all these hadith have been unanimously interpreted by the aim of ilm aim of fiqh the islamic theology islamic jurisprudence islamic law exegetical science of quran every group of islamic sciences the scholars they have been unanimous when i i would be uh, i would feel no hesitation in saying that last 1400 years of islamic literature whatever these things are quoting every single scholar belonging to any school of law agrees to this point and there is no dispute on the classical sciences of islam in the same way it was declared in ashab an nabi lam yaqtuluhum hina fatahul bilad this was the unanimous practice of the companions of the holy prophet when they conquered the various land they did not kill the farmers and growers and the merchants and and the priests and the monks and women and children they were never killed this was a practice which was always continued in the same way the final thing in this respect after mentioning specific categories then there is a very comprehensive category and that is totally a total unlawfulness a total unlawfulness of killing any non combatant non muslim any muslim civil population who is not directly fighting with you one to one in your battlefield who is not a combatant so any non combatant civilian is not allowed to kill in any case what to talk of killing the muslims in pakistan or afghanistan or other countries or in 